On this episode, I'm going to break down how to systematically change and test your whole process to make you better barbecue and to make you a top competitor. Hey everybody, this is Devin Osborne here with Two in the Fat with Fat Bikes BBQ. Hope you guys have seen this stuff now. If you haven't seen it, we're on episode four. Okay, so that means there's one, two, three ahead of you. If you have not checked them out, please go check them out. There's some very valuable content in there. Last episode I did, I talked um, a lot about starting competition, okay? This episode, I'm going to break down how to systematically go into changing and testing your competition styles. So one thing we've always done since the very beginning, and this is from when we had the smoker sitting out, that's if you uh, come in the restaurant, you'll see the smoker sitting out uh, in the little lobby area, and that's what we started on. So it wasn't like we had something big or we had some big lavish ideas. We started on that, and eventually we built the smoker that you guys see out on the street sometimes, and we built that by hand as well as we had that one sorted by hand. And we had some other stuff, little stuff, barrel smokers, and a uh, bunch of little stuff. Like, I would love for you guys to see it, and I'll show you around. I'll give you a smoker tour on one of these episodes here soon. Uh, but hope you guys are loving the content so far. But, like I said, we're really going to talk about what matters for how to systematically break down your cooking processes. So, what you have, let me, it'll be real simple. So, if you're going to cook ribs, pork, brisket, chicken, anything you've got for competition, and this goes for any food and all foods actually, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to break it down one variable at a time. A lot of times people struggle with this factor. They go in, they cook one rib at a time, and then what happens is that one day they cook one rib, they cook it a certain way with X rub and X sauce, and then the next time they cook, they cook it with Y rub and Y sauce, but they can't think of what it actually tasted like last time because they can't physically compare the, both of them right next to each other. So, quick tip, cook two at a time, whatever you're doing, duplicate it, boom. One rack, two racks. Hope you guys can do that. Same thing with pork. One butt, two butts. Brisket, same way. And this is going to help improve your game dramatically because you're going to start crossing stuff off the list and you're eventually going to get to the point where you reduce it down to essentially, well, I have to do these things to execute this product. It's a simple way to get there. So cook two at a time. Change one variable in between. If you're going to cook with X rub, X sauce, and X uh, juice or whatever, change it next time to X rub, X sauce, and Y juice, or X rub, Y sauce, and X juice. Like one variable, don't go changing 12, 15 things because what will happen is is you start changing these things and then you get in the middle of, well, yeah, one came out better than the other or this one came out really good and you change four or five things, but you can't remember, you don't know which one of those four or five things actually changed it even though you're going to assume that all of them did and you're just going to keep cooking like that. But you don't need to because not all of them did. Only one or two, maybe three, usually it's just two things at most that pinnacally change your style, your process, your taste, your flavor. So pay attention to that. Split test these things. That way you're never losing the ability to know what you've done right. And once you've found what you've done right, capitalize on that and then split test that 12 different ways. So this whole game is just testing, 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 and improving, improving. And as much as it is just a game in that sense, you always have to take up another notch. That's what we do here every single day. Over the past, so when we started in 2006, we had you know basically virtually no knowledge of what we were doing. When we went to our first competition in Hannibal, Missouri, we walked away with one trophy and that was not first place, second place, third place, grand champion, anything like that, we walked away with people's choice. Which 
says good and bad, that says you've done enough to impress the people, which is actually very good. However, don't let that jack with you, okay? Because as as astute as that is, it's not very good in the sense that people don't actually judge the food. Those people out there who are out having a good time, they think whatever they're tasting is good, don't matter when it comes to judging. What matters is those six judges that you're going to hand your food into. So don't get distracted by, well, these people think it's good. Because that'll, that'll jack with you. And then you think, well, if it's good to them, it must be good to everybody. And I'm just going to keep cooking this way. I don't care what anybody says. But you won't ever win like that. I promise you. I've seen people do it. I've seen people fall. And they sit there and stew in misery. And they go year after year after year as people pleasers, but not actually winning. And they wonder why they're not. But they're falling into the trap. Anyway, next, next line, next year, we came back and we won a grand champion. But we did a ton of improving over that next year. And super happy about it. And the next year after that, and the next year after that, we did the same grand champion. So, but going through that process, we're split testing all the way. Split test, split test, split test. There's no other option around it. And we still do that same thing here today. A lot of restaurants take and have a product and they want to run it the same consistent thing. And that's 100% agreeable. You definitely want to go for consistency. Always, always, always. But do not allow yourself to fall in one trap of always sticking with the same thing because it worked last time. I don't care if you won first place on a rib a week ago at the last competition. When you move to a new demographic area and when you move to a new environment, it's not going to be the same. It's not. If you're up in Iowa, northern Iowa, at the competition up there in Mason City, and you go down to Kansas City, and you go to their barbecue competition, the judges' taste palettes are going to be different, even though they're not supposed to be different. They're going to be. Why? Because northern Iowans have been raised on some taste profile, and they have their own bias, while Kansas Cityans definitely have their own bias in what they like tasting and eating. You have to play to the field. So whether that's, you know, you have to adjust small in the flavor of the tomato in Kansas City, the tomato flavor, add more of that and add more vibrancy and pungency, or you have to back it down for Iowans and make it sweeter or whatever the case may be. You have to play to the field. So when you're going out and you're cooking, it's just like we do here, I'm always improving. Always, always, always. In the beginning, we started with a good product in 2012. Actually, for that time, to you guys, a lot of you guys, it was a great product we started with because you guys didn't know anything about it. But then we improved a little bit over the years. In the past two and three years, because we've had the abilities to, it has become massively improved in the stuff we're doing in the back. And it's gotten better and better and better. And just like about a year ago, I'm not sure how many of you made the notice and change. No, not a year, sorry, a half a year. In, in about June, um, we, I, I went back and refaced how we did brisket, okay? Well, made it a lot more complicated, a lot more complex. And we finally had facilitated the ability to do that on a day-to-day -day consistent basis. So, I don't know if you guys can think back to that change, but that did happen. And we're doing that with everything in every way as much as we can because we're always improving and we never like to fall behind and just stick into the same consistency belt. So try these things. Go out. Split test. Uh, every time you cook, I encourage you, please, go out and buy two of the things. If you can't always do that, that's fine. Make sure you have everything written down, explanation of why you did those things, and then actually write down the result of how it came out. And if you can, if you want to, record colors, pictures, whatever else, whatever is going to help you remember next time you go out, do the same thing, but just change one thing. And I tell you guys, you will be the next top competitors. So go out, actually try this stuff. You've got to execute to do this stuff. Thanks, guys, for listening. Really appreciate it once again. I hope you guys are loving this. I'm loving it. I'm loving talking to you guys. I got people coming in the restaurant all the time. Um, telling me they're watching me, so thanks to you guys. Really appreciate it. If you haven't liked us on Facebook, go out there, do that. Uh, Instagram, follow us on Instagram.
and we'll see you on YouTube because that's where this is at. So we'll see you next time.